Hey everyone, Alvin Blocks here. Now in the last video, I showed you how you can make obby checkpoints, but today I'm going to be showing you how you can save them. So make sure you've checked out the obby checkpoint video if you haven't already. I'll leave a link in the card and in the description. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the player data script. This is where we firstly set the player's team when they join the game to stage one. Now, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a another event which will run when they leave the game. And this is going to save their team to the Roblox data store system. But firstly, we have to actually create a variable to reference the data store service. So at the top of the script, we're going to say local data store service equals game colon get service data store service. Okay, just like this. Make sure you've got the capitalization correct as well. Now we can create our data store. So again, another variable. And our data store for this game is going to be data store service colon get data store. And we can give our data store a name. So this is the name of the data store which will contain all of the saved team values. So we can say, we can just call it whatever we want. I'm going to call it saved team values. Actually, I'm going to call it obby data store. Because it's the obby data store for everything in our game. Then what I'm going to do is we're going to create a event which will run when a player leaves the game. Similar to player added, we call it player removing. So game dot players dot player removing. So when a player leaves the game, we're going to connect to a function. And again, this function will take an argument of the player that is going to leave. So this player kind of uh, we, it's kind of like a variable, we call it an, an argument. That's going to be the player that will leave the game. So whatever we do to player will be done to the player who leaves the game. So firstly, we need to um, save their, their their team. So we actually need to get their team name. So we can say local team name is going to be player dot team dot uh, name. Let's just have a look here. So if we go into uh, Okay, excellent. So when we say player.team, we don't need to say .name because the value of player.team is actually the team name. So if they're on stage one, player.team will be equal to stage one. Excellent. So now what we can do is we can say uh, data store set async. And when we say set async, it's basically telling the script that we, we want to save to a player's data store. And we have to tell the data store for our game, we have to tell the script uh, where we want to save the data because currently we're saving it in the obby data store but we have no connection between the data that we're going to save and which player we're going to save it to so each player has their own key and the key is a unique identifier of their data store so we're going to have probably thousands of players data stored in one game but how do we how do we know whose data is whose and that's why we use keys keys tell us uh, who the data belongs to that we're going to save and then later on load so the first thing that we need to put inside of here is the player's key and this can be whatever we want as long as it's unique to the player so something that is unique to every player is their user id so we can say player dot user id and then we're going to put dot dot and then in a string we're going to say hyphen um uh, stage okay and this just is um, a unique reference so we know which is which because if we had more than one key for example we had a key for their cache and a key for their stage and we didn't have this um, this string for stage, they would both have the same key. Um, so when the key is the same, you can't you can only store one piece of data. So if we're, we're just going to make it unique by saying what what it is that they're saving to that player's user ID. That is their key then. So it would be like one two three four five hyphen stage. That is their key. Then the next thing that we're going to say we're going to have a comma to separate the arguments. Uh, we're going to put in here the actual value that we're going to save. So we're going to save their team name. And there we go, we have just saved the player's uh, stage or their team name to the data store. But to be extra safe and to ensure that nothing went wrong when we saved, so if the Roblox servers went down just as we were saving, we're going to put it in a P call. And what happens in a P call is if the data store uh, errors when we call set a sync, we can catch that error in the P call. And when it is in a P call, it won't stop the entire script. When we usually have an error, it will stop the whole script. But we can just do a P call, so we can say local success comma error message equals function uh, sorry p call function like this and we'll close the function with an end and closing bracket like this so any code in between here if it 
errors, it won't stop the whole script because it's inside of a pcall. The pcall will stop it from erroring and it will just carry on with the rest of the script. And if it was a success, then success variable will be set to true automatically. But if it is not a success, then success will be false and the error message will have some kind of value attached to it. And that will be an error message sent back from Roblox. So if it was a success, then we can just print all went well. Else, if it wasn't a success, then we can print out what the error message was. And that will tell us what went wrong. Usually it's if Roblox's servers go down. But um, if it wasn't a success, then we're just going to print out the error message. But apart from that, we are done. It should now save the player's uh, stage to that data store. All we need to do now is get their data in this player added function. So when they join the game, we're going to try and get their data. So firstly, let's try and check for that data. So we're going to copy this set async code from the player removing and just paste it in here. But this time, we're going to get the data. So instead of saving, we're trying to load it. So we say get async instead. And we don't need to have the second argument of the, the, the data that we're going to write to the data store. Because we're not writing any data, we're getting the data. So all we need to give is the player's key. That same key from down here, so that we can uniquely identify the player's data store inside of the obby data store. And then, what we can do is we can create a variable outside of here called local retrieved data. I'm just going to call it um, data because it's too long to write that. And then I can set data over here to the returned data from get async. And then what I can say is if it was a success and if the data was correctly um, gotten and there wasn't any errors, then what we can do is we can say player.team equals data. And that will set their team to the saved team name so if the, if the saved team name was um, stage two in fact what we'll do is we'll say game dot teams and then in square brackets we'll put this data because we have to have a team object and if, it, if, if the data is stage one stage two then we'd say game dot teams dot stage two and that would be the object of the team that we're setting their team value to so we're changing their team to the saved value but because the saved value is a string we have to supply an object now, if there was no data and there was an error, what we can do is set their team to stage one. But also, if data is it, there is no data because they're a new player to the game, if it, if we if it was a success that we did get the data, but there was actually no data there, the getter sync didn't go wrong, so it was still a success, but there was just no data. So if there is data, then we'll set their team to whatever that data is but if there isn't any data saved we can just set their, uh, their, their stage to stage one okay so I think we're all good to go here let's um, let's run a test and see if it works now if you want to see this working what you've got to do is you've got to publish your Roblox game because data stores only work in published games so I'm gonna go publish it right now by going to file and then clicking publish to Roblox as then it will let you publish the game, so just follow all of these steps and click on create and it's created the game for me. Now I need to go to Roblox on the website to play it. But before you do that, click on game settings and click on options and make sure that enable studio access to API services is turned on. This will allow us in the future to test our data source within Roblox Studio. But it doesn't seem to be working for me, this, this checkbox in Roblox Studio currently. I think it's broken. So I'm going to show you another way of how you can turn it on. So find your game on the Roblox website, click on the three dots, and click on configure this game. Then, you should be able to turn on enable studio access to API services. Now it seems that it did work in Roblox Studio when I turned it on, so that's all good. So now that you've published the game, and you've turned on enable studio access to API services, you can either test it in Roblox, or you can test it in Roblox Studio. I'm going to test it in Roblox Studio. So in we go, and let's hope that this works. I'm confident that it will. Um, so let's head to a stage quickly. Head over to stage two. And we're going to step on the stage and we're going to stop the game. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the data store editor plugin, which is a great way to see your saved data and see if it actually saved. 
In fact, I just realised that I made a mistake here. I said player rem viewing instead of removing. So I'm just going to change that and let's try it again. So here we go. And I'm going to set my stage to uh, stage 2 again because it obviously didn't save last time because there was an error in our script. But if we go over to stage 2 and step on the spawn and we're going to keep the output open so we stop the game. And let's see what it printed. Okay, so it said, cannot store instance in data store. Data stores only accept valid UTF-8 characters. Now, this probably means that we've accidentally stored an object instead of some text. So, let's have a look. So, this was the error message. So, player.team. Hmm. Uh, okay. So, let's try saying player.team.name. Maybe that will work. Let's try that. Because the team uh, property, <laughs> that's a bit annoying, uh, the team property player.team is actually an object. And because it's an object, you can't actually save objects to data stores. So we have to actually save the name of the object. Which is why when we load the data, we say game.teams and in those square brackets, we say the name of the data. So let's have a look. So I think everybody, everything went well. Uh, because there's no error message, so let's play again and see what happens. No, okay, we're back at stage two. No worries. Sorry, we're back at stage one. Um, so let's have a look. Let's check the data store editor. Okay, so it's saved. It's saved, so that's a good sign. But So now we know that there's a problem with when it's loading. So let's have a look here. So uh, it gets the data. If it was a success, then if there is data, then player.team equals game dot teams data um, okay let's do some printing to find out so print success else print error message and we'll also just print test one and test two we'll load this up and try it again okay so it printed success test one and let's just check again what was saved to the data store editor. Okay, so it's it's saved stage one. Let's change this to stage two. So imagine that we've now changed our data store um, to save stage two. Let's see what happens. Okay, excellent. So it spawns us on stage two because that was our saved data. So let's just have another look at the saving here. So we're getting their team name. And we're saving that. Let's try it once more and see if this works. So I'm confident that it should be working now. And I'm going to leave this in the video because it's a great way to show you how to debug your code. Um, because you're obviously going to come across some data store errors sometime in your development career. So it's great that I leave these in because it's teaching you how to debug by yourself. And what we've done here is we, we just debugged our script. So we're going to go to stage 3. We're going to leave the game. And... Now, let's check the data store editor to see what was saved to our data store. So I'm going to put my user ID, comma, stage. And it saved stage 2 for some reason. And I got to stage 3. Now that's weird. But no worries, we will have another look at this. Let's try one more time. Hmm, I'm back at the start weird. Okay, so I think I figured out what was causing that problem. I think it was because when you first joined the game, your um, your first team was stage one. Before any of this code ran, it was currently at stage one. But then when we got the data, we changed it to uh, another stage. But what usually hap what, what happens is in the game, <laughs> in this game, your starting location like the where you normally spawn is actually above the first spawn and that's just because it's I think it's in like the middle of the map or something but anyway what I've done is I've changed the first spawn so that allow team change on touch is set to false only for the first spawn because when players first join the game their if they're a new player their team is immediately set to stage one so they don't need to change the team on touch but for any other stage, when they get to that stage, obviously we, we want to change their team when they get there. So only stage one, I've changed allow team change on touch to false. Now also, at the bottom of this 
uh, of this player added function, event, sorry, I'm, when all this data is loaded, I'm going to say player colon load character. And this is basically respawning them. So when we've updated their stage to the one from the data store, we're going to respawn them to that spawn location. So if they spawn at the start and their data hasn't been loaded yet, when the data is loaded, we'll respawn them so that they spawn at their uh, loaded um, team spawn. So let's try this out. Now, I just saved the game at stage 4, and I got teleported back to stage 4. So now, if we head over to stage 3... So here I am, about to jump on the stage 3 spawn. I'm now going to leave the game, and I'm going to rejoin. Now what's going to happen, it's going to load my team, then it's going to respawn me. <clears throat> and there we go. So it all happened very, very quickly, so we didn't see it. But I've been respawned back at stage 3, which is where I left the game at. So really, really cool. We have just implemented obby saving checkpoints. We're going to test it even more. We're going to go over here and stage 2 and leave the game and respawn. And if everybody is interested in what I use, that plugin to edit the data stores on the fly, that's called Data Store Editor. And it is by... Uh, crazy man 32 really really good plug in that and it allows you to change players data stores uh, without using any scripts or anything so really really useful especially when you're debugging data stores and data stores are the hardest to debug and you've just watched me be able to de debug my data stores there and you've been able to see what I've done I added prints at certain lines to check what was happening um, to see where the script got to before it, it broke and I also used the power of pcall and error messaging to print out an error message when it arose uh, which will help me figure out what was wrong with the data store. So remember, publish your game for them to work. Turn on Studio API requests so that you can test it in Roblox Studio. And that should be all for this video. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do like the vid. Share it with anybody you know that will be interested in learning data stores. I've got loads more data store videos on my channel, which I will link in the card. So make sure to click the thumbnail to go check those out. But don't forget to subscribe for more Roblox scripting videos. I make loads of videos to help you create your own Roblox games and earn Roblox from them. Until next time, this is Alvin Blocks signing off. Cheers. Bye.